Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we're answering a campfire question from Jack Adams, who asked, have you ever done a video on your likes and dislikes of your Airstream travel trailer? Well, Jack, the short answer is no, we have not <laughs> until today. In this video, we're going to give you five likes and five dislikes of Airstream travel trailers. And in the spirit of giving you the bad news first, we'll start with a dislike. Cost. Oh, there's someone at the door. You pay a lot more to get an Airstream than you do most other types of travel trailer. But I definitely think there are deals to be had in the used Airstream market. So don't be discouraged by that dislike. Yeah, and that gets us to our first like, mm -hmm. and that is that Airstreams hold their value pretty well. You know, there's a book on the market called How to Buy an Airstream. Bye. You could call me Sean, and I'm the author of How to Buy an Airstream, available exclusively on Amazon Kindle. If you are wise about the purchase price of your Airstream, then you're not going to take the bulk of that depreciation hit. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just run out and pay the sticker price for a brand new unit, then you're going to be the one who takes <laughs> the steep drop in depreciation. We personally, as documented in the book, purchased our Airstream gently used. Just been taken out to camp by this little old lady on Sundays. We <laughs> the, were told it was taken on one two week trip. It was really in great condition when we bought it and we saved a lot of money going mm -hmm. that route. You know, we've used the heck out of our Airstream for <laughs> yeah. more than a decade. Yeah. And I think today we could sell it for roughly what we paid for it. So right. it's held its value really well over the years another like would be the aluminum exterior panels the skin of the airstream when you see an airstream coming down the highway you pretty much know immediately it's an airstream because of those aluminum side panels so like to me that's the essential character of an airstream it's what makes an airstream different i mean really a lot of the core components of an airstream aren't that different from any other RV appliances. The same refrigerator, the same water heater, the same furnace, and so forth. That aluminum skin is unique. But I would say the dislike that goes with that is that that aluminum skin can be very fragile. Aluminum dents, and you have to be concerned about that. But the thing about Airstreams, not only are you worrying about dents from backing into something or you know those sort of scenarios, but you're also worried about it with hail. Uh, I think hail damage is much more likely to happen in an Airstream than in a traditional travel trailer. Yeah, the aluminum skin of an Airstream has been described to me as durable but delicate. Mm. And it is easily damaged. If the damage is extensive, it can easily be catastrophic to the trailer because those aluminum panels are not easy to replace. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, for example, our friend Vinny at Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair doing panel replacements. And it's at least <laughs> a two person job that will take him days to complete. So it's not that unusual for Airstreams to be completely totaled due to panel damage and panel dents. It's very time consuming to replace those panels and so it just costs a lot of money. So while we love the aluminum, we also kind of hate the vulnerability <laughs> of the aluminum because you always have to be worried, is it gonna yeah. hail this weekend? The aluminum comes with a cost. One of the other things about an Airstream that we dislike is the lack of storage. Lack of storage on the exterior, like you don't have any storage underneath an Airstream because they ride low. You also don't have a lot of storage inside an Airstream because they're more narrow and curved at the top. That iconic shape requires that the inside of your Airstream have curved walls. So that means when you open those cabinets, the interior of them have a curve. So that cuts out on some of your storage. 
conversely, <laughs> we love those curves yes, of an Airstream. They're beautiful. They also are very aerodynamic. So uh, one of our likes about the Airstream is that it tows great. I mean, you can tow an Airstream a little faster down the highway than you can a you know boxy trailer or fifth wheel or something like that. At higher speeds, the air flows quite smoothly past it mm -hmm. and uh, they have a relatively low center of gravity so that's another like that goes hand in hand with those aerodynamics that low center of gravity helps uh, provide for better handling when towing and so we have towed at you know pretty high speeds out in the west in those wide open areas with great confidence Another dislike when it comes to an Airstream is they can be tricky to work on. They require a little more knowledge than just your average travel trailer. They have to be jacked up at a certain point underneath. So finding someone to work on your Airstream that really knows them is important because if you take them to someone that doesn't really know the ins and outs of an Airstream, it can cause major problems for you. They can do a lot of damage. So you can't just take it to any old shop on the corner you kind of have to make sure that they've been trained in Airstreams, that they've got some experience with them, and that they know the difficulties involved. Yeah, if you've been following our channel for a while, you may recall the story that the first time we took our Airstream to an RV service center, it was damaged because <laughs> one of the service technicians got up on the roof and he put his knee on the end cap of the front of our trailer. Uh, we walk out and we look back and we see a dent on the roof. Big dent on the front roof cap, sort of the front corner of the Airstream, right next to that ceiling fan that the RV center had been working on for the past week. A knee size dent. <laughs> and so we ended up pulling that dent out and aluminum kind of stretches when it's dented and pulled back out. So you can never really get dented aluminum back perfectly the way it was. Thanks to the brilliance of Christy's father, we worked on it one afternoon and we got it back to be pretty close. Yeah, if you didn't know where the dent was, you probably wouldn't notice it but we can point it out. Airstreams have one huge advantage over a lot of RVs and that is that there is no engine. No engine means much lower maintenance over the long term. Of course this is true of any towable <laughs> RV but it's one reason towable RVs really appealed to me because engines over time deteriorate they break down as you put miles on the engine they require additional maintenance and with an Airstream you don't have to worry about that mm -hmm. and so I think the aluminum skin the timeless shape and the fact that there's no engine leads Airstreams to have greater longevity. They may cost a little more upfront, but usually they last longer. I like to buy things that are built to last. There are a lot of Airstreams that were built many decades ago that are still on the road being used today. There are a lot of more disposable types of RVs. They're cheaper to get into, but over time they break down and deteriorate down into nothing <laughs> and they end up in landfills. Airstreams for the most part do not have slide outs. They did build an Airstream with a slide out for a few years there but they don't anymore and a lot of people will really say oh I want slide outs Airstream doesn't have them and you're right Airstream doesn't have them and that can be a pro and a con. The con is you lose the space, you lose the storage. The pro is you don't have a slide out to worry about maintaining. Um, we hear from people regularly that are having problems with their slide out because their slide out won't go out then they can't get to their restroom or they can't open their closet or whatever and so by eliminating the slide out you sort of eliminate all the problems that can potentially go with it. Yeah that kind of brings up one bonus like and dislike okay and we'll start with the dislike and that's lack of interior space mm -hmm. airstreams are much more compact than a lot of other rvs i mean you step inside an airstream for the first time you may be a little surprised because if you're coming from the world of motorhomes and fifth wheels and then you step wow. into an airstream mm -hmm. it just seems like 
you're tiny. A, a tiny, <laughs> like you're in a really small space. So a lot of people ask us, you know, is that space too small? And that's a personal question that we can't really answer for you. <laughs> I would say the like that goes along with that is it's cozy, it's comfortable, Mm -hmm. You've got everything you need and nothing that you really don't. Mm -hmm. And you'll learn over time that the lack of excess is actually a big advantage. In some ways, it's the compromises that makes Airstream great. You get all the muscle, but none of the fat. They've really thought this through. It's kind of like uh, being on a boat in a way. Yeah, so that goes back to personal preference. Are you somebody that needs a lot of room to stretch out? When we need space, we just go outside. <laughs> That's pretty much what you have to do with an Airstream or put on a pair of headphones and zone out for a while. Yeah. That back corner area is wet. Yeah, it's moist down there. We're definitely getting water in here. A major dislike, leaks. Airstreams have those beautiful aluminum panels that we've mentioned before. The drawback to that is that those panels can leak. Every time you see a seam on an Airstream, that is a potential location for a leak. So you really have to stay on top of resealing them because once you get a leak, it can be hard to find it simply because where the leak is on the outside may not be where the water's leaking inside. It, it may roll back and leak somewhere else. So pinpointing where that leak is coming from can be kind of a nightmare. <laughs> And leaks can potentially be catastrophic to airstreams because all airstreams have wooden subfloors. Mm -hmm. Some even have MDF, which is kind of a composite board, which is really vulnerable to any kind of water mm -hmm. getting to it. It will break down and that leads to very expensive floor repairs. If you have a rotten floor in an airstream, you're in big trouble. It's gonna cost a lot of money yeah. and time to fix. Because they basically have to take everything out to replace it. You know? Yeah, so you know, that has been the death of many airstreams. Mm -hmm. So airstream owners have to be very vigilant about the seals all around the rub rail around the perimeter of the unit mm -hmm. and also up on the roof you got to make sure that those seals are in good condition mm -hmm. because if water starts getting in you may not see it because mm -hmm. the water can get inside the roof it can run along the interior of the wall and you'll never even see the water. It could be getting down into your subfloor. So you gotta check those seals. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying a used Airstream, I think it's important to find someone who knows what to look for when it comes to floor rot and make sure that you have it inspected before you purchase it, or at least talk with someone over the phone that can sort of give you some pointers on what to look for just to make sure you're not buying an Airstream that has a rotten floor that you can't see. So. Again, uh, to plug the book, How to Buy an Airstream, I sell this thing for dirt cheap. I've had people send me messages saying that that book saved them thousands and thousands of dollars. One guy told me it probably saved him $10,000. So, and I, I think I charged a few bucks for it. Yeah. <laughs> probably should be charging $99. <laughs> and I'm selling it way too cheap, but I really wrote the book to help people out there who are shopping for an Airstream. Don't make an expensive mistake. Do a little homework. And you can have a fantastic ownership experience if you go in eyes wide open, know what you're buying and know what to look for. We're gonna conclude with a like about no, Airstream. And on a positive. <laughs> and that is the Airstream history and community. Yeah. Now with regard to the history, I personally love that Airstream has been around for all those decades. I mean, mm -hmm. Airstream's roots go back to the 1930s mm -hmm. and Airstream had the charismatic founder, a guy named Wally Byam, and he did <laughs> lead caravans around the world. I mean, he was taking Airstreams from South Africa up to Egypt. He was taking them all over Europe. They went to Asia, that he went to Central and South America, and he really established the Airstream brand as a travel brand. It's about wanderlust, it's about having an Adventure. adventurous spirit. 
yeah and just getting out there and seeing the world yeah he really wanted you to get out there and explore and find things that are different from where you live and meet different people and explore different cultures and that spirit really led to the creation of a great community people who appreciate Airstreams and the Airstream brand. Mm. It's not really even limited to North America because we've seen Airstreams in Europe and in different parts of the world. But the, the people who are attracted to Airstream, they sort of have that spirit and mentality. And we've met so many wonderful people mm -hmm. through the Airstream ownership connection. This is what yeah, Airstreamers do in Alaska. Takes care of all your Water problems. Problem. That's right. Olives are for or catching salmon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shared experience. Kind of that instant bond. They tend to, at least in our experience, be a little more adventurous sometimes just because they are willing to compromise space for the functionality of being able to take their camper to more locations. You know, if you have a smaller, more narrow trailer, then you can go more places. I mean, it's just the way it works. There's another so, like. Yeah, another like. <laughs> a bonus like. Yeah. Yeah, we can take our Airstream to Yellowstone. You know, we can take it to Grand Tetons. We can stay in a lot of different national parks uh, without fear that our rig is too big to fit into the campsite. Yeah. Now, it's still a pretty long rig, and I'm sure if we had a smaller unit, we could get into even more places. Mm -hmm. But some of the really large, luxurious fifth wheels and motorhomes are restricted to a tiny number of sites. Yeah. Because they just can't fit in a lot of these places. There were at least five likes and five dislikes. I think we went over in each category. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jack Adams, for the great <laughs> question. Notice that Jack posted this question on our Facebook page. If you have Facebook, like our page. You can ask us questions there. It's an easy way to contact us for campfire questions. Yeah. You can find our page at facebook.com slash long, long honeymoon. And you can also find us on Instagram. Just type in long, long honeymoon and you'll find us there. <laughs> and this is a good opportunity for fellow Airstream owners to share your ownership experience. Mm -hmm. You know, if you own an Airstream, chime in in the comments, tell us what you like about it and what you don't like about it. Because a lot of people are probably watching this video for that sort of information. Mm -hmm. We encourage everyone to look at the comments section because you'll probably get some more first-hand accounts of likes and dislikes with Airstream travel trailers. Nothing's perfect, so you're, you're not going to find the perfect rig, but you'll find what's perfect for you. And for us, our Airstream has been perfect. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, guys, we love all of our audience and we appreciate you sticking with us as we went on this crazy overseas Asia adventure. We love travel, period. And we told you when we started Long Long Honeymoon, it's really about that wanderlust and that traveling spirit. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you have uh, touched that yourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button down below. It means the world to us for you to join Loloho Nation. Thanks for tuning in, guys. What do we say here on Long Way Honeymoon? We say Loloho. Lo -lo -ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Empty. I don't know, tarantula or snake? Difficult decision. I say neither. Eat local. Whatever you do, always eat local.